is Tracy Cook and welcome to the podcast series Victim to Victory. This series gives a voice to those that have overcome obstacles in all forms, that dare greatly to share their real stories and experiences. Amazing humans that have seen hope and risen above those adversities to become victorious, that now support and inspire others to do the same. And today we are giving a voice to Robert Saul, Bob, welcome to Victim to Victory. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you. Now, I just want to share before we jump into how uh, Bob is, is helping the world. He has an amazing bio and uh, he has got some really important things to share with you today. Now, um, Bob saw was he was born in Chicago and he has two growing children and a shout out to uh, Bradley and Ben. And uh, he's been married to his wife, Jan, for over 33 years. That is amazing within itself. So that is wonderful. Now, I want to really touch on um, the Conscious Parenting book that he has as well. And um, it's My Children's Children. Raising Young Citizens in the Age of Columbine, all about children and thinking developmentally, nurturing wellness in childhood to promote lifelong health. And um, this is absolutely wonderful. This is so needed. And our worlds and our communities are changing so much that these kind of um, thought leaders, these impactors, these people that are changing, helping lives, and especially in parenting more than ever, Bob, thank you very much for inspiring and supporting communities and parenting like you do. Can you talk us through who is Bob, who is Robert Saul, and where does your story start? Well, uh, th thank you so much. It really is it's a pleasure and it's fun to, to, to be here. I, um, let me sort of jump in about uh, after medical school, I decided to go into uh, pediatrics. Uh, and then after pediatrics, I decided to do medical genetics also. So I did the two of those. But once I started into practice, um, and I jumped in with full force and uh, jumped in with uh, great vigor to be the best doctor and the best person I could be. But after about 14 years, I felt like I wasn't giving back to my community like I really wanted to. And that was 1993. And I heard 12 words that have been so impactful to me since. Um, and it's in many ways have become my mantra. For anything that happens in your community, I am the problem. I am the solution. I am the resource. Yes. What, that mean, what that means is for anything that happens in the community, I need to take personal ownership. It's not their problem. It's my problem. And I need to be part of the solution. But to do that, I need to devote my resources to that. Um, so I it took actually hearing that was one thing, internalizing that was another. It actually took me about two months to realize what it meant. So I, then I went to the community leaders and I said, put me in coach, I'm ready to work. I'm ready to do some, some impactful things and got very involved in my community. Maybe even smugly so, maybe I felt so good about what I was doing that I, I still wasn't caught up with reality. Uh, and then, uh, April 20th, 1999, two teenagers walk into a high school uh, in Littleton, Colorado, massacre 13 people and take their own lives. And then I asked myself, could that happen in my community? And the answer was yes, it actually had already happened um, years prior. Um, and what have I done to help prevent that? And the, the honest answer was not enough. So I, I put pencil to paper. Back then, we used to do that still. Um, and, uh, the, and I wrote it, an op-ed article uh, what, for what I considered to be the five steps to community improvement. And I just, over the next 12, 13 years, I, I added to that with over 160 plus op-ed articles to the local newspaper. Um, and I, so I, the, what that has forced me to do is go through an introspective journey. Uh, and hopefully my introspection could be of some benefit to others. Um, the five steps to community improvement are one, learn to be the best parent you can be. Two, get involved. Three, stay involved, because that's different than getting involved. 
for the one that's the most intuitive, but the one that's very difficult, especially in today's society, at least in the United States, is love, love for others. And then the one that's the most difficult, forgiveness. Mm. Um, so let me go through those. Let me go through those briefly. What, learn to be the best parent you could be. Could be. I chose those words carefully. Uh, and so that tells me that as I've been on this journey, actually, that got me to where my, my final book, Conscious Parenting, but learn to be the best parent you could be. Parenting is a constant learning journey. It's lifelong learning. It's not innate. It, it's a, it, 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 it takes work. You need to learn. You need to understand. You need to have the ability to alter. Yet everyone does not have the same abilities. Everyone does not have the same circumstances. So learning to be the best parent you can be is where I think I need to be. And that's really come home to me in, in the course of my pediatric career. Um, you know, due to educational circumstances, socioeconomic circumstances, a variety of things, uh, their social emotional status, everyone is at a different place uh, in terms of parenting. So my job is not to tell them what to do. My job is to hopefully enable them or empower them to do what they can do. In many ways, it's to gently peek behind the curtain and, and see what I can do to be of some benefit to them. Um, so that's been a, a uh, and I go through in the first book, My Children's Children, Raising Young Citizens in the Age of Columbine, I go through some of those steps. Getting involved is so important. You need to get involved. You need to be that positive example for your children. You need to be, if you're gonna say, I am the problem, I am the solution, I'm the resource, you need to get involved. But then you need to stay involved. Uh, what you get involved with might change from moment to moment, from year to year, decade to decade, but you need to stay involved uh, for that to be impactful. Love for others, again, um, whether you're a person of faith or not a person of faith, uh, that's sort of why we're here on the planet, uh, is, to, is to care for others, to uh, care about others, to empathize with others. Um, but then the one that I've really been on the, the journey with is learning about forgiveness. Um, and that's so hard um, in, in so many ways. It's, a, it's an up and down. It's sometimes it's two step forward, one step back uh, as, you, as you work with that. But it's, you know, when your four-year-old whacks your two-year-old and you, and you tell the four-year-old, tell your two -year tell your brother or sister you're sorry and the four-year-old says i'm sorry um that's very what different than what yep. <laughs> that's very different than what a 14 year old a 24 year old a 44 year old an 84 year old should be doing so forgiveness is a journey also um and i love the words of maury schwartz in the the little book called tuesdays with maury uh i don't know if you've ever heard of that there was a mm. book a, um, a reporter from the New York, one of the, excuse me, one of the Detroit papers uh, reconnected with one of his college professors who was dying. And so every Tuesday he went to visit him for a period of time. And all, of all the pearls in that book, to me, one of the most important ones was about forgiveness. Forgive yourself first, then forgive others and do it now. Uh, forgive yourself for what you've been thinking, for what you've been doing, because then you can start to make this, the positive steps going forward, forgiving others and do it now. Now that it's not like something, a light switch, uh, that takes work also. Uh, and then the other important part of forgiveness that I think we have lost, uh, lost track of is what I call social or communal forgiveness. Um, and sometimes there's things that have been done in the past by say our group of people uh, in Australia, you've had these issues. In the United States, we've had these issues. Mm -hmm. um, it's important to forgive yourself, forgive others, and do it now. And I'll give you an example. Here in the United States, the American Medical Association, which is the professional organization for most physicians, a good number of physicians, many years ago would not admit Black physicians. Now, it would have been easy going forward for those people when they finally started to admit Black physicians to say, wasn't me. I didn't do it. Mm -hmm. But it was us. It was us. And even though it wasn't me at the time, it was us. It was our organization. We need to take responsibility for that. We need to 
forgive ourselves, forgive others and do it now. So they actually issued a, a group apology. Um, mm. And, you know, did that change anything for what happened in the past? You, know, you could argue it didn't change anything. But what I think it does is it resets your moral compass going forward. Uh, and that's what's, that's what's so important. So as I, again, that was sort of not Columbine 1999. Uh, and over then 14 years later, I published that, published my first book, My Children's Children Raising Young Citizens in the Age of Columbine. Because I think what we've done, at least in our society, I suspect most Western societies, is we've lost track of citizenship. Mm. Citizens take care of each other. Citizens are the hallmark of democracy. Uh, citizens care for each other. Citizens care about each other. Uh, and they're, they realize they're all in it together. When I was a youngster and my parents divorced, um, my mother said, oh, Bob, I just want you to be happy. I just want you to be happy. I'm sure that was maternal guilt uh, mm -hmm. for uh, a marriage that dissolved, unfortunately, because of my father's alcoholism and, uh, and abusive behavior. Um, but he, um, but she, fortunately, for my mom set the positive example, because I could have easily just pursued a course of happiness in a very selfish manner. Uh, but I didn't. Um, and so what I've, I think I've grown to realize that this is an oversimplification, but happiness is a secondary effect of being mm. a good citizen. Yes. Um, it, so if you take care of if you take care of other people, you take care of of those around you, those that make you feel comfortable, those that make you feel uncomfortable, um, then you're then you've taken a giant step towards citizenship. Uh, and uh, being that person that the society needs going forward. 100%. So for a breath oh. and, let, and let you ask. Oh, wow, Bob. Um, you have just shared so many golden nuggets there. I don't even know where to start. My mind is blowing. Uh, you're the problem. You're the solution. You're the resource. Um, that is a very powerful, very, very powerful. Um, and let me screen that from the root, root, rooftops um, as well alongside you. You are the problem. You are the solution. You are the resource. And when you um, shared uh, what you just said about um, actually being a citizen, you know, uh, putting yourself in someone else's shoes, uh, thinking it from another person's perspective, maybe even just stop and take a breath for a moment before you uh, comment because people are walking around and we don't know what they're walking around with. Uh, we've all got problems. Uh, we've all got uh, solutions inside of us as well, but we don't know where that, that person is in that journey to find themselves. And I think it was so powerful when you were mentioning those types of things. And um, I fully agree and, um, and fully full support as well. We have to put our own oxygen mask on first, like they teach us on the aeroplanes, don't we? If we don't look after ourselves, how can we look after somebody else? If we don't pour into ourselves, then how can we pour life into somebody else as well? So really having a look at our mental state, our physical state, what we're eating, what we're listening to, um, you know, those, those uh, what we're watching on TV. And I liken it a lot of the time to um, crabs in a bucket, Bob. You know, if your crab's in a bucket, one tries to get out and the other crabs pull it back down. They go, no, it's safe down here. Don't go out. You know, listen to us. We're your safe zone. And like, I just want to peek over and see what it's like. And that's okay. Okay as well because um, we can't keep people down we have to support people who want to go and explore so what you were saying was just so powerful and I know how impactful your books are in helping communities as well and especially with being a pediatrician um, working in that space as well uh, what would you say um, if you don't mind if I ask you a question what would you say would be the number one biggest thing that stood out in parenting for you and I know you can probably find this in your books as well so I encourage people to go and purchase the books and we'll share where to do that from but what would you say the top thing um, that mo mainly stood out was the most common across the board to you? Um, I, I think um, well it's tough to come up with a number one. Yeah um, I thought it might be. 
but <laughs> I put you that, on the I spot mean, completely to, here. To me, it's very, it's, it's very, if, it's, if you need to be a citizen for your community, you need to be a citizen for your family. Um, and so that's sort of being consciously aware of where you are in the relationship between you and your child. And that's, that can be very difficult. And that's sort of the theme then from, from my last book, Conscious Parenting, using the parental awareness threshold. When I was uh, changed jobs late in my career, I had a leadership training called Conscious Leadership. And they talked about a line. And when you were above the line, you were open, you were receptive, you were ready to learn. When you were below the line, you were closed, you're defensive, you're always right. Um, and from a leadership standpoint, we've all been in that situation where we've been in a meeting and we're saying silently to ourselves, when's this going to be over? I'm so bored. This is so terrible. Um, and so if you're conscious about that and you want to stay below the line, that's fine. If you want to say, okay, I need to change my responses. I need to get more involved in some way. You start to creep above the line. I think parenting is the same way. Parenting is a, there's a line. And when you're above what I call that line, which is the parental awareness threshold, you're open, you're receptive, you're ready to learn. When you're below it, you're closed, you're defensive, you're right. And because I said so, I'm the parent. Um, now, again, we're human, we're parents, we're going to be above and below the line. The point is being aware of where you are. And, and if you were below the line in terms of how you responded to that incident with the child, and if you realized in the didn't realize it in the moment how wrong you were, hopefully in retrospect you can do that. Because the the whole point about parenting to me is one is being conscious. And for most circumstances that happen when you need to be in fully engaged, you need to pause, you need to assess, and then choose a response. That's very difficult. <laughs> for, for most things. Most of us are sort of pre-programmed in some way to just sort of shout out a response or because I said so, or because I'm the parent or whatever. Uh, but if you're really consciously aware of where you are in your relationship with your child, I think you can build and grow so much more uh, than just having a knee-jerk response. Um, and I'm and, sure you, and I'm sure you cover that, that in the book, but do you think it's kind of social conditioning and we're just practicing our environmental behaviors when we've actually grown up as well? Oh, I, yeah, I, th I think so. And then that's why I don't think parenting is an innate ability. Uh, I, I talk about in the book, I think you need a map. Uh, I think mm -hmm. you need to look at the signposts along the way uh, and you need to uh, find a trusted figure, hopefully your pediatrician, uh, in some ways, in terms of learning about development, learning about parenting, because you can't walk into your pediatrician's office and in and in a five five minute uh, dissertation learn about how to be a parent. It's a journey, uh, so you have to be ready ready to be on that journey um, and just in, be engaged. I think one of the the other corollary to what I was talking about is being conscious is listening. Of course, that is anywhere anywhere in society, hopefully that, but most of us are, are not as engaged with their children as we should be. Look them in the eye, stop doing what you're doing and listen to what they're saying. Um, and that's just so important in today's society where everyone has their handy dandy phone uh, nearby and are more likely to glance at the screen than at the human being in front of them. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, we need to be, be fully engaged. Yeah, we have a rule at our um, our dining table every night when we have dinner, no phones at the table. <laughs> That's it. Oh, ooh, Just yes. for 15 <laughs> minutes, we're going to eat tea and we're going to talk to each other <laughs> because it, it, it worked in my day and I can't see why it still can't keep working now. And I tell you what, even if it's for 15 minutes, even with busy families, and I'd love your take on this as well, Bob, but... Uh, just that human interaction, like you said, just looking people in the eye. How was your day? Really simple conversations just to, to stay connected, um, to let them know that they're seen, that they're heard, that the door's open if they 
do have something going on that they want to come and talk to you about as well. W would you say that um, uh, having that that family time where you're fully aware and you you have just that quality connection, even in busy busy lives, what would you say the impact of that would be on families? Well, I think I think that would be huge because it, it it's interesting if if a family could look at the issues instead of I am the problem, I'm the solution, I'm the resources. If we could change the pronoun, we are the problem, we are the solution, we are the resource. So as a family, we need to be looking at uh, those issues uh, that are around us so we can be as impactful as possible. That is absolutely amazing. Where were you 15 years ago when my children were little? <laughs> that, you would have saved a lot of arguments, I can tell, I can well, tell already. I, I, <laughs> I'm not sure I was in this same place 15 years ago. I'm sure I wasn't. Uh, so again, for, uh, life life for me has been a journey. But an, an interesting, quick little story. One uh, one night, my when my son was about seven or eight, uh, I yelled at him for doing something. This is my youngest son, who's now 31 now. Uh, I yelled at him for doing something. He just turned into a puddle. Uh, my wife got mad at me for yelling. And we went into that family meltdown mode where nobody talked for two hours. Everyone just sort of walked by each other. Um, then it was time to put him to bed. Um, and uh, I was laying down with him. I said, son, I'm so sorry. You did something I think was wrong, but dad was completely inappropriate. And I want to apologize for what I did. Um, and I want to do better going forward. And he said, dad, would you be quiet? I said, why? I said, I hate it when you're nice. Uh, so, uh, and, I, and I don't say that to pat myself on the back, but I say that to say, well, it looked like I maybe understood a little of the, bit of this conscious parenting before I even wrote a book about it. Um, so it's, it's um, wonderful, but that it's, is uh, so it's, wonderful. it's work. It's work. It is. And it's a never ending uh, work in progress and a never ending journey um, as yes. well. We're, we're always learning, even as parents. And sometimes we get it wrong and that's OK. It's just what we're going to learn from it, isn't it? Absolutely. And that's why we become grandparents. <laughs> to, to, Definitely. To, to try to do better going forward. <laughs> <laughs> and if you were to leave the audience with a message today, what would that be? Um. Of the, I, I think of the five steps to community improvement, again, the number one for me would be uh, practicing forgiveness. If we're going to reconcile, if we're going to move forward as individuals, as families and societies, we need to understand and do better on our forgiveness journey. That is absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much for being a guest. I know how inspiring, empowering, supportive and how you're changing and helping people in the communities with your books, your words and your changing lives. And thank you very much for being brave to share your story as well today, Bob. And we'll be sharing where to connect with you. You are so appreciated. And you can find the Victim to Victory podcast series on YouTube, Apple, Spotify and our Facebook group. Please subscribe, share and comment to be the change the world needs more than ever. And let me leave you with a message of step into your story, figure out who you are and do it on purpose. Thank you, Bob. Thank you.